What is up, guys? I know you probably weren't expecting us to drop an episode tonight, right around, you know, probably this one probably come out like six o'clock when we're recording this, uploading it, get it out there to y'all. We have breaking news from Jackson, Mississippi, guys. And, you know, I, listen, I say breaking news. I th believe me and Brandon predicted this could be coming about a week or two ago once we were covering the Jalen Jones transfer and the whole Dion laughing scandal, which ended up not really even being a scandal. But we got Quincy Casey transferring from Jackson State. He entered his name into the transfer portal this afternoon, Brandon. And, I mean, this this pretty much, I think, just about leaves Dion with just his son going into next season in the quarterback room. You know, say what you will. I don't know if it would have really been an open competition, so I really don't want to blame Casey here for making this decision, especially after the NCAA finalized the one-time transfer rule today. It is official, guys. We covered it last week when it was, like, official, but now it's official today. So Quincy Casey going to be immediately el eligible elsewhere, but Brandon – is this a big loss for Jackson State? And what were your what was your initial reaction to this transfer? I mean, yeah, personally, I think it's a huge loss. Obviously, Sanders' son is going to be the starter next season, as everybody expected. This, I mean, if this didn't set it in stone, then I don't know what else did. Um, but Quincy Casey, man, that's a big loss. I mean, that's still a giant loss for this program. I mean, what happens if Sanders goes down with an injury? What happens if he goes into his first game? He's never played a snap in college football, guys, and that's I think that's something that a lot of us forget. Yes, he has to sit out this season, um, but that's because he signed his letter of intent to FIU or FAU, one of those, one of the Florida, one of the it's Florida. A, it's F, it was FAU, I believe. Or Atlantic, okay. Well, he signed his letter of intent, um, and – you know, he, he backed up on it uh, when his dad got the job at Jackson State. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things where now they're down a backup quarterback, a really, really good backup quarterback at that, and potentially a guy who, who would be able to compete for the starting job. You know, Zach, you and I talked about it, uh, what, two weeks ago, a, a week ago, two, whatever it is. And, and, I mean, we understand the talent Quincy Casey has. I think that he might have been taken for granted here a little bit. I still, you know, you said there's no scandal to be had. I still think that probably rubbed him the <laughs> wrong way as it rubbed us the wrong way, right? Or at least it rubbed me the wrong way. Um, yes, it, you know, there's more to it, but, man, this is going to end up being – I would not be surprised at all. What I mean to say is I would not be surprised at all if this came back to bite Jackson State. Like, not at least I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, I get it. I, I was kind of was peeking around. So, you know, we're not at a 1,000 subscribers yet, but Cut Day and All Script and them boys are. So they have a community page where they can post kind of like a Twitter and kind of post breaking news as it comes. We got to get in the studio, record an episode, and then get it out to y'all for breaking news, unless y'all follow us on Twitter. But, you know, my first my, – my initial thing I saw on there was a lot of people saying – oh, he's entering the transfer portal. There's no guarantee. Like, there's better players than you in the transfer portal. Man, Jackson State fans got to pump the brakes here, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, okay, so I just want to say this. I don't want to be hypocritical, but how many of y'all were up in our comments saying that we were too hard when y'all pissed Jalen Jones and y'all had to start a better quarterback? Just saying. The, the narrative switched real fast on your boy, Quincy Casey. Listen, y'all were telling me he's got the elite arm strength. He's got the quickness. He got he has the quickest release, all this kind of stuff. But now he's garbage? Oh, yeah. I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it, guys. Listen, I still didn't think benching Jalen Jones was the right decision. I was impressed with, the, with what I saw from Casey, though. But, Brandon, you make a real good point. Is anyone a guarantee, guarantee nowadays? No, not coming from high school. Listen, he played high level high school football, but have you watched his film? Um, not, not in a, like probably not close a, a long time. Yeah, yeah, a long time. I don't think he has elite arm strength. Yeah, that I'm, ball does not come zipping out of his hands. There were a few touchdown passes where that ball was a little wobbly for me, and I think Quincy Casey has an argument to maybe have a bit quicker release and stronger arm than even Sanders does. I think if it would have been a fair competition, Casey could have competed. I'm not as low on Casey as some of these Jackson State fans all, all, all of a sudden. And listen, there are stories of players going to the transfer portal and not working out. 
But if you have the talent and you're willing to work for it, it's going to work out for you in the long run, guys. Let's just yeah. pump the brakes before we're saying this kid's making a – what do you want him to do? So, Brandon, you know, you come out of college. You, you're going to get a – you get a whiff of – you get an internship, let's say. That's what his one-game start was, was an internship. You perform probably B plus, A minus level, right? Yeah. Then you're lining up. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to interview for this job. And then you find out the boss's son's interviewing too. And, uh, you know, there's rumors that it might not be a complete open interview. Are you still going to interview for that job? Or are you going to go find an interview for a company where the boss's son ain't in the running? No, I'm, I'm, I'm moving out. I'm going ahead and <laughs> my best shot anywhere else. I'm going to be the first one in that next door because, you know what, that job's already gone. You know, that, that, that starting role was decided the second that Sanders transferred to Jackson State. Or, or not really transferred, but – you know what I mean? I mean, he kind of transferred, kind of. We'll, we'll call it a transfer. He he really kind of committed to Jackson State because I mean, he really didn't even step on campus at you know down there in Florida. But you know, for me, man, I think Casey's going to find a home. And so, Brandon, I don't, I got to look at the quarterback. You know, this is breaking news, guys. So we haven't had a chance to go through rosters, potential locations. One that just pops off the top of my head: this kid's from Memphis, from Tennessee. Could Memphis be interesting? Brady White, you know, on his – I mean, I don't know what their backup quarterback situation is looking like off the top of my head. Another one. This is real interesting, Brandon. You think Eddie George would like to have a quarterback like Quincy Casey come in? Home, yeah. You know, home state kid, you know, stick in the HBCU ranks. Like, I think that could be an amazing fit. Give Hugh Jackson this type of kid who has the arm talent and the athleticism to really make an impact. Brandon, and the key factor is this is a COVID year. This kid's got four years of eligibility left. Yep. And, and listen, you, you, I, I already know Jackson State fans are going to bum, bum rush these comments, you know, especially the salty ones that just got called out by me. But this kid, I think, has what it takes to make it. I think Jalen Jones has what it takes to make it. And I see this, uh, this narrative in these comments too, Brennan. You know, he didn't want to compete. He didn't want to compete. I don't think it was going to be an open competition. Listen. The laughing scandal, yeah, it got everybody. It got every single person that covers Jackson State football right? because at, no one knew the behind-the-scenes story. But once that came out, we're all good now. But I, you cannot convince me, Brandon. I, there's nothing Dion can tell me. There's nothing you know anybody involved in this could tell me that makes it feel like this is this was going to be a fair competition. And I don't even think if Quincy Casey went out there and put on the show of his life, he was going to start for Jackson State next season. He wouldn't have. Like I said, it was decided the second that Sanders decided he wanted to play college football at Jackson State. Absolutely. I agree. You know, I think I think he I think going back, you know, in the state of Tennessee, I mean, even okay, this is gonna I know he's not gonna be good. And I this might just be wishful thinking. I mean, Brandon, I like since Jay Cutler has Vandy even had a quarterback as good as Quincy Casey. Yes. To be honest. I mean, I know that's like I know that's crazy. Like this kid probably isn't SEC talent, but Vandy, bro, like it's I, I don't know, mess, but I, I really do like the fit up there at Tennessee State. I gotta and we're gonna do some research. We're gonna come back on the two minute drill next week. Um, talking about you know potential landing options for Quincy Casey and maybe even Jalen Jones. Some more stuff's probably gonna come out about him very soon in, in terms of you know walking through everything. It just makes it hard, Brandon. These kids gotta transfer now because their season got moved to the spring. Well, we're seeing spring practices already underway. Can these kids commit anywhere other than, you know, the FCS level and have a realistic shot at competing? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's definitely going to be interesting to keep an eye on. And Quincy Casey, I think, has the talent to move on up to FBS. I agree. And, you know, uh, I also the, the last comment I wanted to address, there was someone, I forgot who it was. I should have just called them out. They were like, well, when you take over a team that had these records and listed Jackson State's mediocre records for the past like five years, it's like, Quincy Casey's a freshman, my guy. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have anything to do with that. Well, who are you calling out? This, and I just, I don't understand. This, this reminds me of the Bama situation that we covered. I forget which, Bama, I, for, who, I forgot what we covered, where they flipped on a player, Jalen Hurts, I, yeah. I think it was. Like yeah. some of them just like flipped on a dollar. I'm like, y'all were saying he was the hottest thing in the market. And now you're saying he's a bum because he's not going to play for your university. I can't stand that side of college football. Me and Brandon wish all the best for Quincy Casey. 
and we're going to keep y'all updated on the situation. You know what? I, I even want to reach out to Quincy, give him a platform. Let's even come on the Blue Bloods and we'll talk about this transfer. We'll let y'all know. But listen, guys, we wanted to come on here, give like a just a 10 minute breaking news breakdown. We appreciate y'all checking out this episode tonight, even though it was unannounced. Two minute drill, NFL draft primer coming out tomorrow, and our first round NFL draft live stream. We also have Micah Allen, Oklahoma State insider, on the podcast. Her episode is being dropped tomorrow. West Virginia wraps up the Big 12 and 30 Days theme as well. But, guys, quick episode, man, but we'll be back with some more. Myself and Brandon and the Blue Bloods, man, we are out.